question for George Nelson. What do you think of the invasion of decorative elements, both standard and special, in recent American architecture? How long is it since Adolf Loss cried out ornament is crime? I am too lazy to look up the date and to make sure that it was Laws and not someone else who said it. In any case, in about three quarters of a century there has been an architectural revolution, the victory of the modernists, the elimination of the crime. But the victory of the 1930s has already become the sterility of the 1960s and the familiar dialectic of revolution is again acting itself out. The negation is being negated. Now that the ornament is destroyed, the search for a grammar of decoration is on. The human animal indeed lives out his life in a condition of paradox. In trying to arrive at an opinion regarding the controversy, perhaps the main problem is to determine for oneself whether the question is to be set within the framework of aesthetics or morality. It is hard to believe that there is anyone who is against decorated architecture simply because it is decorated. There are too many admirers among contemporary architects and critics of the German Baroque churches, Cambodian temples and so on. One suspects, therefore, that the issue is one of morality rather than aesthetics, although it is not always easy to disentangle the two. In the American scene today, there have emerged powerful forces which are as anti-human as any in recorded history, and in some of the most important sectors of society, such as advertising and big industry, there now exists what might appropriately be described as a brothel world. Ruthlessness, disguised by amiability, complacence and entertainment, the stock in trade of the successful brothel, are also the basis of the all-important activities of sales. The ambitious young executive is urged to improve his techniques for selling himself. Even a whore only rents herself. In the recent antitrust case involving some of the nation's largest electrical firms on charges of defrauding the government, one company insisted that it knew nothing of the dishonest activities of its executives and left them to shift for themselves. Even among gangsters, the mob takes care of its own. Big architecture in America today belongs to this world. The architect has always had to please his client, but the corporate client is something unusual in architectural history. Corrupt in terms of human values, conformist in his attitudes, timid, anxiety-ridden, this new client has a very interesting set of special requirements. He wants the building to express the corporate image, and thus a problem of architecture becomes a problem in advertising. He wants something different, but not too different. He wants individuality, so long as it is not real. He also wants richness, but uh, since he generally takes pride in his lack of education in the arts, he tends to confuse the impression of great expense with the achievement of great art. Much recent large-scale American architecture fits admirably the requirements of this brothel world. The new decorated buildings do indeed look different, individual and rich, and few devices are better than the grill. It is safely traditional in appearance and it looks expensive. The grill as such is a neutral device, with an honorable and sometimes delightful history. I think it is possible that what we distrust is not the device, but the integrity of the architect, for the indiscriminate use of a standardized decorative element without regard of the nature of the building inevitably leads to the suspicion that what is going on is the exploitation of a highly saleable product and not the creation of architectural solutions. The best of American architecture today has an impersonal perfection which reflects the anti-human attitudes of the world which commissioned the work. It is truthful and thus meets one of the basic requirements for any work of art. 
current decoration introduced hopefully perhaps as a humanizing element is not real. It is a lie, and a lie of the kind so often and so amiably acted out in the brothel. It is perhaps difficult for Europeans to take the measure of the immense pressure affecting the work of some of the most sensitive and talented American architects. A recent office building in Detroit is enclosed in a decorative grill of aluminium. Under the skirt, according to its architect, is another museum building. But what ambitious architect can afford to do another museum building? Competition is too ferocious to permit such indulgences. The pressure to create the illusion of originality is very strong. Humility is not a virtue prized very highly in the brothel world. We do indeed need buildings that are individual, rich and enlivened by fantasy, but until these qualities are found necessary somewhere in the life of society, it is unlikely that architecture can manufacture them by itself. Zodiac number 8, America June 1961